All right. Um, so, uh, as uh, Tim said, so this is um, uh, concerns the paper uh, that I wrote uh, last year about uh, detecting exocomets uh, with life. Uh, and of course, this is meant to be a quite uh, short talk here, so um, I won't be getting into very much detail. Of course, you can you can always ask me uh, questions about it, but I'll, I'll try to give more of a, of a general overview um, and 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 some background to 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 what we're doing here and, and why we're doing it. So, um, okay, that's wrong. Okay. So, uh, as uh, you uh, all probably know, um, comets uh, are um, objects that spend a lot of their time uh, in their uh, in the outer parts of the solar system, uh, being uh, extremely uh, cold and small, and thus uh, extremely faint. Uh, but uh, some of them have uh, high eccentricity orbits and thus visit uh, the inner uh, solar system uh, once in a while. Uh, and uh, when they do, and especially when they get inside of, you know, uh, one AU or so, uh, then they enter an active phase uh, where they start um, shedding a lot of dust. Um, and so their, their effective uh, surface area increases dramatically and uh, their temperature, of course, also uh, decreases, uh, so increases uh, when it gets uh, closer to the sun. Uh, and so uh, both in, in uh, at visible wavelengths and in uh, infrared wavelengths, which is what we're most interested in here, um, it becomes much brighter. And in fact, uh, it starts to, um, if it's a big comet, it will outshine uh, even, even the Earth uh, seen from, from a distance. Um, and so that means, of course, uh, that uh, since life can uh, image Earth-like planets, that's basically what it's designed to do. Um, since uh, comets are, are even brighter in some cases, uh, life could also detect comets. So that's a pretty strong motivation to, to actually uh, see what we can do with life uh, for exocomets. Um, before we move on, I also shouldn't forget to say, right, that when we think about comets, like in this, this nice image here, uh, we think of, of, of them have, as having these, these um, wide tails, which uh, if you do really deep imaging, actually these extend to like, uh, an AO or so uh, in extent for a big comet. Um, and so, so that's, of course, a, 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 a very spatially extended object in some sense. However, uh, the vast majority uh, of the flux uh, from the comet uh, comes from, from very close to the, to the cometary core in, in, the, in the head of the, of the comet. Um, and so uh, when you look at this with the spatial resolution uh, of, of something like life, uh, it will appear as basically a perfect point source. So if we're looking for, for comets, we're basically looking for, for point sources, not, not extended objects. Um, so that's one um, motivation to look into what we can do with exocomets uh, with life. Uh, another uh, practical motivation is the fact that uh, these days we know actually a whole lot more about exocomets than we did just a few years ago. Um, so uh, this is a system that probably most of you are familiar with. This is the Bela Pic uh, system, uh, which has uh, actually two directly imaged planets, for example. You can only see one of the planets here, but there's another one uh, inside. Uh, it also has this very uh, uh, nice uh, photogenic uh, debris disk around it, uh, which of course contains lots of, of bodies, including cometary bodies. And the fact that there are cometary bodies uh, in the Bela Pic system We've really known for a, for a long time, for several decades, because people have seen spectroscopic uh, signatures of so-called falling evaporating bodies. So these are these are exocomets that that uh, gets get extremely close to the star and, and evaporate, and you can see uh, spectroscopic signatures um, of that. Uh, but that doesn't tell you very much about the like the general cometary uh, population, like how many comets there are and how how bright they would be uh, at infrared wavelengths and so on. Um, uh, that, however, we've gotten a lot of help with uh, recently because uh, these days we have nice uh, photometric missions, such as TESS, for example, uh, which give very good photometric precision and can actually see uh, cometary transits. So this is an example of a cometary transit, which is a very sort of, uh, you know, um, it, it's, it's a type of event, morphological type of event that you couldn't really mix up with anything else. It, it's very characteristic. Uh, with, with this relatively sharp uh, decline and then a sort of exponential uh, return towards uh, the photometric baseline. Um, 
so this uh, starts to give us information, as we'll see in the next slide, about uh, how many uh, comets there are. Uh, it also uh, gives us much better sense of, of whether they would be detectable or not, because basically the, the amount of, of, of light that's blocked here uh, at, the, at the sort of peak of this event um, corresponds to basically the, the, the uh, optical cross-section of the, of the dust in, in, in the cometary head. Uh, primarily, uh, and so uh, that tells you something about the effective area that, that's going to be that's going to be radiating in the end. Uh, so that that uh, it goes a long way towards saying something about about whether uh, the comet is, is um, detectable or not. Um, now, so so tests can actually see lots of these uh, events. Uh, in fact, uh, these kinds of events, when when Tess has been staring at Bela Vick, uh, it's found uh, uh, approximately one uh, such uh, comet through transit every 10 days. Um, and in fact, all of these uh, transit events uh, come from comets that are have large enough effective sizes, so to speak, uh, and high enough temperatures uh, that uh, you would expect to see them uh, with life, or most of them. Um, now, uh, so, so the... One in every 10 days, uh, well, to put this into some kind of context, um, you uh, expect the comet to be in its active phase uh, and, and be observable to life for approximately 100 days for each exocomet. Uh, so that means actually that, that if you just take the transiting comets um, uh, and you know every, each one of them stays in the field for, for 100 days and the field gets re replenished and, and uh, or, or replaced with, with uh, uh, one new exocomet every 10 days, it follows that, that uh, you expect basically 10 of these comets to be visible at any time. All right, so that's a lot of observable comets actually uh, in, in the, in the Vedapic system. Uh, and in fact, it might even only be a tip of the iceberg because uh, maybe, uh, you know, we're only seeing the, the comets that transit, we don't see the ones that, that don't transit. Now, of course, um, Bela Pic, as we saw in the last slide, is, is largely a, an edge-on system, and the, the uh, planets go on an or, almost perfectly edge-on orbit and so on. Uh, and so you might expect, perhaps, that a lot of the bodies will be also be in this plane, in which case a lot of them would transit. However, uh, comets are a dynamically excited population. They have to be because they have high eccentricities. And that also means that you should expect that they have quite high inclinations um, in general. Uh, so actually, uh, probably um, only a minority uh, of, of uh, exocomets actually transit. Um, and if you look, look at you know, the distribution of, of inclinations, for example, in the solar system, which is to this figure here, uh, then it follows that you know, it could easily be as low as a fraction of uh, as 1% or something uh, that transits. Um, so, so we're really talking about a lot um, of exocomets uh, potentially here, so between uh, 10 and 1,000, uh, say, um, at any given time. Uh, that's not a good thing, by the way, in, in, uh, as, as we'll return to, but, but uh, well, it, it certainly shows that there are plenty of exocomets out there uh, in, in, in some kinds of systems. Um, so uh, in this study, we, we looked at beta pick just to, to, because that's where we know the most about comets, uh, to see, you know, what, what could life uh, do here, basically. And so just to, to put the beta pick system into context, um, uh, it, the, it has a debris disk, which is, is, is really enormous. Uh, so so we, we've measured uh, flux out to almost uh, 2000 uh, AU. Um, and so the, these are the outer parts of the disk. With, with a, uh, this is, is uh, scattered visible light with a, with a chronographic bar here. Uh, so you can't see the inner parts of the system, but if you would uh, zoom in to a square that's like this sort of, then you get to this kind of scale with, with this image that you already saw in a previous slide. Um, and then you have to kind of zoom in again. So if you zoom in on, on, on like this kind of square, square kind of, uh, then you get then you get this field of view, uh, schematically illustrated here, uh, with, with with the B planet and the and the C planet for for scale. Um, this dashed line shows you what the field of view would be of life. Um, but of course, uh, you would not see uh, comets out exocomets out here even. Uh, though this is covered by the field of view, because here they're not the comets are not in an active phase, so we're only interested really in in where, the range where planet where comets would be in an active phase, and that's in inside of this green 
uh, dashed uh, line here so inside of you know a few AU maybe two AU or so 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 basically we're, we're just looking at a region that, that's like a thousandth of, of, of the whole disk uh, so there's there's a lot of, 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 of there's a big reservoir here of, of, of disk to 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 um, get exocomets from which is, is uh, uh, probably a leading reason to why we see so many of them um all right so so as I said right there's there's actually so many or implied, is there's actually so many uh, exocomets in the Betapic system that it becomes a problem uh, because the field uh, of view gets gets basically crowded. Um, and uh, so uh, life, uh, of course, um, has a limited spatial resolution. So that means that, you know, exocomets could blend into each other, but also uh, life is an interferometric mission and it does not uh, fill all of the UV plane. And that means that you have a, a sort of even bigger degeneracy problem in the sense that that you know if you're trying to distinguish a lot of signals uh, that, that that blend together in one interferometric signal, um, it it starts to become difficult if you're not probing a very large fraction of the UV plane. Um, nonetheless, there are probably things you could say uh, even in the beta peak system um, about exocomets. Um, uh, so and and that's sort of uh, illustrated in this rather complicated figure here. So uh, this is just the the rows in this figure are three different dates. So uh, what we call day zero, seven days later, day seven, and then uh, day thirty. Uh, and uh, this this left column here is the the sort of geometrical actual setup of of the comets in the system. So this large comet here, the, the size of the ring is proportional to the to the size of the comet. Uh, so it's it's moving here from from here and and, and closer to the star from day zero to day thirty, uh, and, and then all of the comets are, are are moving around in the simulation. Um, and so in in this this right hand panel, uh, I, I don't expect you to really uh, you know, and I won't explain the details um, uh, in, very very carefully uh, because there's no time. Uh, but uh, just th this is basically the 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 interferometric signal that life uh, would see, and it's kind of a, a sum of all the all, all the different components in in, in a complicated way, um, uh, in, in in the nulling mode of, of life, um, and so uh, basically every every colored line here uh, corresponds to the individual uh, component that you would measure if you had only one of these. Uh, comets. So the, these, this uh, fairly strong blue line here corresponds to this large uh, comet here the, the, in, in, with a blue ring here. And then the black line is the, the total signal basically from, from all of the comets altogether in the system. Um, and so what you can see really here is that this, this large comet really uh, contributes to a large fraction of the signal. And especially when it gets closer to the star because then it gets hotter. And so, uh, as as it gets closer to the star, the interferometric amplitude uh, becomes uh, larger, um, and uh, the uh, blue line starts more and more closely following the black line. So, in other words, in in, in this case here, the the signal from this comet uh, pretty much completely dominates the signal. So, at least you know, in this case, you can say something very concrete about this planet, because you can sort of back that out, signal out easily. Whereas for all the other comets uh, that, that, that are, are the sort of noise down here, um, you wouldn't be able to say anything, basically. Uh, but but uh, at the end of the day, probably less extreme systems than beta pick uh, would be ideal targets. Uh, so very quickly, because we, we're already probably a little bit uh, over time, so just two more points. One is, OK, what can we uh, say about comets if we if we detect them? Well, we can start to do uh, mineralogy, for example. Um, so, so we we get a spectrum, for, uh, of course, uh, with life, uh, which even at the low resolution uh, of life um, can tell us quite a lot about uh, the, the constituents of of uh, the, the cometary dust. So, for example, this is a simulation uh, of what life would see for for a, for a comet uh, if it's uh, consisted of of, of enzatite grains versus if it consisted of forest dry forced right grains um, and and th that can be very uh, strongly distinguished uh, with even with um, you know uh, 10 or 100 hours of, of, of integration time and so as a very final point um, uh, the most interesting systems are probably um, uh, by the way uh, I should say also that you know regular systems uh, you know old systems like the solar system 
um, these kinds of events with a very bright comet only happened like ha happen like once in a decade, right? Which is sort of the lifetime, more or less, probably that we expect for life, the life mission. Um, and so, uh, you know, if you just observed regular sun-like solar systems, old solar systems, you would probably expect to detect maybe one or two events by chance, but not more than that. So if you want to really look for planets, you want you want to look for the younger systems, which still have debris disks and, and, and signs of active uh, um, dynamical activity and so on, uh, but maybe not as, as extreme as Beta Peak. So probably the best systems are something like Fomalhaut uh, or Epsilon Eri, which are, are not only a bit uh, older than Beta Peak, which means that they have probably a more suitable amount of comets, you know, one per uh, one per uh, period that you're observing would would be the perfect number, of course, and that's that might be uh, you know this kind of, of range. Um, uh, but also these these systems are even more nearby than the Beta Pic system, which is about twenty parsecs away. These are are like uh, you know seven point seven and three point two some or something uh, parsecs away. Uh, so you could tell even more about about uh, the individual exocomets than you could in in, in the example with the Beta Pic that I that I just showed. Uh, so I think I'll end there.